goal of the jihadists, whether they will admit it or not, is to Islamicize America. They believe the whole world should submit to Islam. So when they're coming into the United States of America, they want to see Sharia law be implemented. Strictly speaking, Islam has been on the march since its inception. They believe that, well, if we are killed, we will go straight into paradise. Stay with us. We have a powerful, powerful interview with Dr. Mark Gabriel, Islam and Terrorism. This is one of his books. He is a prolific writer. And we're doing something today that, and by the way, that, that video that you just saw, I want to thank uh, the uh, uh, Coral Ridge Ministries. You can go to them on their website. Uh, it is www.coralridge.org, and you can get your own copy of that. That is one of the best videos. I just wanted to give you a clip of exactly what we're going to be talking about today because the man that we're talking to happens to be uh, Dr. Mark Gabriel is one of the best qualified experts to explain the relationship of Islam, the Quran, and terrorism, or the jihad. Mm -hmm. And he uh, is an ex-Muslim, former professor of Islamic history at Al Jazeera uh, University in Cairo, Egypt. Uh, it's the most prestigious Islamic school in the world. And right. we have the privilege once again of having this guy. I am so in awe of him because not only of his background and what he went through mm -hmm. in order to come out of this movement, because, and he lives in danger often. He travels thousands of miles annually. Mm -hmm. But today we're going to be doing something that we've never done before right. on this show. And we came up with it just moments ago. <laughs> okay. Dr. Mark Gabriel, what a privilege to have yeah. you. Thank you, Herman, Good for the you. invitation. I'm so happy to be with you and sharing today. And who is that good-looking lady right next to you there? Uh, it happens to be on Skype, and she is going to be talking to us <laughs> from Germany. Introduce that good-looking lady. Uh, you can look at her. <laughs> Uh, this is my beloved wife. Uh, she is uh, such a wonderful gift from the Lord. And uh, the Lord uh, introduced uh, us to each other in a miraculous way. Now, her name is Anya? Unia. 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 Yes. Unia. And it is a privilege to have you from Germany on Skype. It's a privilege for me to be with you. I'm very happy to be with you today she was supposed to be here Thank but you she couldn't me. yes she couldn't get here right yeah she's supposed to be here but uh, somehow uh, she has to be for uh, for a while there yeah. uh, till i go back and uh, okay great yeah, we'll be together and and i understand that you helped write one of his books his latest book on swiss lam and you wrote it in german Yes, we translated it in German, yes. And tell me about yourself. About myself, well, I'm German. My heart was always that in my life I want to do, to do, to do something that makes sense, you know, not, not just to work, to earn money, but to do something that makes sense. And this is how it came that um, for more than 10 years already I was working in, in a mission and in a church when I uh, about two years ago I met Mark or let's say when God brought us together mm -hmm. and we got married two years ago it was the hand of God really bringing us together and it's it's a joy and privilege uh, being able to serve the Lord now together as a team Mark and we just came back from a it's from a one month speaking tour in Germany. Wow. Where, where he was speaking about this topic of Islam and uh, in the German speaking countries I interpret for him. So it's a great pleasure to minister, to serve the Lord uh, together as a team. Your English is impeccable. 
Oh, thank you. Wow. I'm doing my best. <laughs> wow. Boy, God has blessed you so tremendously. How did you meet Mark? How, how, Mark, how did you meet him? Uh, in 2009, in January, uh, I was preparing for uh, a tour um, in Europe. And this tour planned to start from Germany. And uh, in January, a um, couple, they live in New York, friend of mine, they are business people. They came down for a vacation and uh, we met together uh, over lunch. And uh, these couple were, they was praying for me for many years for God to answer our prayer and God to cover me with his love and his mercy w by introducing, uh, you know, m my future wife. So they came in that day, we are sitting around the table having lunch and they said, Mark, as you know, we've been praying and, uh, but before we came, the Lord answered our prayer and the Lord spoke to us that in this coming tour in Europe, you're going to meet with your future wife. You're going to meet with her. And God gave us three signs. You will meet her in Germany. She is a German and she is working full time in ministry. So look for these three signs. So I went to, uh, uh, I traveled to Europe. I start my tour in Germany. Uh, by the way, when I arrived to Frankfurt airport, um, I had something with, with me in my bag. And that things that they gave, uh, that, that I have it. This couple they brought to me from New York as a gift. They said to me, when you go to Germany and when you're going to meet with her, just give her this gift. And I opened that gift and I find that gift is, can, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I don't know if you can see I it. Can see <laughs> it. You can see that ring. Wow. Very, 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 uh, very good ring. So when I look at the ring, I said, this, is the, these people, they are really serious. They are really sure. <laughs> they brought this really expensive gift with them and they gave it to me and they are sure. So, but yes, they are sure because they heard from the Lord. That's amazing. So when I arrived to Frankfurt airport, uh, the custom, they asked me uh, to declare what I have, what, you know. So I said to them, I have my laptop bag, I have my bag here with my clothes, and, but I do have this, uh, this little box with a uh, very, very expensive gift. So they asked me, what is this? I said to them, this is my engagement ring for my German fiance. They asked me, what is her name? <laughs> I said to them, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> then they asked me where she live in Germany. I said to them, I don't know. And they really, they, they, they was, they look at me like, you know, they can't understand what, 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 what these guys, you know, uh, talking about. So he, however, they took me uh, inside the office and then they took that ring and they start to search about the, va the value and then they find out, they ask me to pay that, you know, certain amount. Yeah, yeah. the duty. 365 yeah. euros. So I paid the, the, the you know, the, the, uh, the tax or the duty. And then I start my, ger my German tour for three weeks, traveling all over the country and every meeting and every night, waiting after the meeting, someone will come to the front Aww. and say, Mark, I am here. I am the one that your friend told you about it. And I cannot find anyone till the last day of my tour. And uh, I spoke with uh, the pastor, the German pastor who was arranging the tour in Germany. And uh, then uh, he spoke with me about her. And this is how we connected together. I get to know about her from this pastor, oh, German you know pastor. That, you knew that was the In one. the last day of my tour in Germany. Wow. Can, you, can you get on your back? Okay, he, uh, technology amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> we lost the signal a little bit. The Skype is just. I know. Phenomenal. We'll get her. There we come. It's gonna come back, folks. 
and I know she was hearing this story because <laughs> D Dave was shooting her expressions while you were talking. That's right. There, there she, she comes. Is. There she oh, is. Okay, she's back. <laughs> Did you hear the story? <laughs> Did you hear the story? I heard the story, and I know the story. <laughs> it yeah. was God. It now, was when, God. When, when you first saw him, what was your response? I mean, how did you feel? The first thing I saw a picture. He sent me by email a picture. And what I saw immediately that when you see his eyes, you can look straight in his heart. That's right. This is what I saw on the pictures. And this is what I like about him till today. Wow. His, you can see his heart from his eyes. And this he, is almost like an arranged marriage in a way, wasn't it? it? It's amazing. Yes. <laughs> yes. Arranged by God. Yeah, exactly. heavenly arranged. Yeah, yeah. arranged. Yes. Yes. He, told, he told me about you that you're as beautiful inside as you are outside. <laughs> oh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty neat. <laughs> Mark, uh, tell us about your story because even though we've had you on before and you speak all over the world, there are people that right now are wondering, okay, what is his story? My story, it's a story of uh, every human being who are striving to live in peace and to enjoy the gifts that God is giving to all mankind, religious freedom, liberty, freedom of thought, freedom of speech, freedom of opinion, and these kind of things that in my country, of, uh, there, back there in Egypt, uh, I suffered the lack of this gift because of the influence of Islam, the influence of Islamic law, and the influence of the Islamic system over the uh, Islamic society that uh, uh, create a, a, a huge damage into this kind of gift that God given to us as a human being. Uh, you cannot think in a way that different than what Islam want you to think. Mm -hmm. you so, cannot there, so democracy would not be a part of their lifestyle? Uh, of course, um, democracy um, described by um, uh, conservative Muslim scholars all over the Islamic world, including the Middle East, as an uh, infidel system, as a system, as a pagan, pagan system. It's, uh, it, it's against Islam. It's uh, not compatible to Islam. In Islam, they do believe they have another system called Shura. Of course, Shura, it's not democracy. It's totally different than democracy. Because Shura believe, or Shura speaks about Allah, he is the only one has the right to make law. He is the lawmaker. Man or woman, they don't have the right to make a law. Therefore, Shura, that Islamic concept of government, it's totally different than democracy as a Western uh, system. So when we are trying to come into countries and give them democracy, freedom, as we call it, that doesn't translate to their religion, right? Well, first, uh, Herman, you need to look at the people there. The people there that they are not, they are not the same. They are different kind of people in 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 Islamic world. And I did describe this in my book here. Into, I divide or I describe the Muslim society in the Middle East or even even here in America, to three different categories. The first one, and they are the majority, the one who are living far away from practicing Islam as a system, as a political, as a religious system. They, we can call them ordinary Muslims, or secular Muslims. Mm -hmm. These Muslims, like any other human being, these kind of people, they like to enjoy. And many of them things. have come to the United States. And many of them come to the United States, come to the West, in Europe. So second category is the committed Muslims. And you will see this second, commit, uh, second category existing here in, in America. They are the imams of mosque, of the mosque. They are the Islamic teachers. They are the leaders of Islamic organizations. They are the people who are committed uh, in, in their belief and in their faith. 
So, uh, and, and the second, uh, third group, it's the radical, all the people who um, became members in uh, radical Muslim uh, so groups. So they strap the bombs on the, yeah. and want to do the terrorism. Exactly. Yeah. If you ask me, who is the most closest one to uh, practicing Islam the way Muhammad, the founder of Islam, did? I will tell you the third category. Wow. The radical, the terrorist, they are the most sincere, faithful Muslims to their faith and their belief. So Muhammad desired that what they're doing, that's what he wanted. Exactly. The Muhammad, he present a very famous call in the Quran in a chapter called As-Saf, means the lion. And the Quran say calling upon Muslims. Uh, to come and sign a trade with him. Trade, to make a deal, to sign a deal with him. And that trade, the Quran says, um, if Muslims give their life and their money, their wealth, for the cause of Allah, to strive and to fight with their souls, with their money, and if they will do this, Allah will reward them by giving them the paradise or letting them to inherit the paradise, or to putting them in paradise. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, O Allah followers, believers, hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min azabin alim? Can I tell you about a trade, a deal? And if you agree with me for that, you know, about that deal, you will save yourself a torment punishment. And that deal is, to believe in Allah and His Messenger. And to strive to use jihad, use, to do jihad, using your souls and your wealth, your money, for the sake of Allah. Well, Allah will inherit you the, the, the paradise. I've lifted this from your book. Islam hmm. is committed to destroying Christians and all non-Islamic Islamic governments. Is that a universal goal? Yes, this Islamic, this is, uh, this is uh, when we come to the theory of the Islamic belief, the Islamic system, when we come to the Quran, what the Quran teach, yes, the bottom line of Islam as a religion and the teaching of this religion and what the word of the Quran telling, uh, telling us that Islam, Islam cannot accept any other form of religion. Islam presented by Allah, by his messenger Muhammad to be the only religion to be accepted and practiced in the world. Uh, and, and the Quran explained that in the deen and the law Islam, this is what the Quran says. The only accepted religion by Allah is Islam, no other religion. Islam comes to destroy any other form of religion or any other form of belief. So uh, this is, is not just a, 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 a propaganda or just a, a, a Western op, uh, 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 you know, uh, accusation. Uh, to, uh, you know, against Islam or no? That's 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 the true teaching. But there do, do secular Muslims feel the same way? And do they do they? What is their uh, idea of paradise? Do they think they're going to paradise even though they're secular, and they're not fundamental? Uh, no, uh, no. The okay, uh, secular, or even committed, or even the third category. If any one of these Muslims die naturally, normally, none of them has the assurance that they will be in paradise. Even Muhammad himself, Muhammad, he did not die in the battlefield. He died naturally. He had fever, and he died after that. And he himself, he was asked if he is sure he's going to be in the, parada in the paradise or not. He swore in the name of Allah, even he is the messenger of Allah, but he didn't know where he's going to be if Allah is not going to cover him with his mercy. Now, I, from your book, hmm. the only guarantee of heaven other than martyrdom 
Exactly. Is that the only guarantee of heaven? It's the only, the Islamic system create like a box, and I call it like, you know, like a black box, a box. And that box has a door. Muhammad took everybody, put it inside this box. He locked the box, and he took the key, and he walked away. The people inside the box, they only have, he left for them just a little window that they can jump and they come out of that window, you know, through that window from that box. And that little window is martyrdom. Wow. It's martyrdom. There is no hope for anyone inside this box to be, to be sure what is his eternity going to look like. But they pray every day, several times a day. Yes. Five times. With the desire, right, to go to paradise. Exactly. But they never know whether they are. Or they, not. they don't know. Exactly. Exactly. The Quran says, Yahdi may yasha, wa yudillu may yasha. He lead whom he want to a right path, and he lead whom he want into the bad path. Wow. Yeah. Wow. How did you trust Christ? What, what happened? For me, as, as a, a, a person who was born in that box, and a, and a grow professor, up, a professor. Grow, up, yeah. mm -hmm. grow up in this box, get to learn about the environment of this box, about the, the belief system, about the culture, uh, about the way of life in that society, of this society inside that box. And I cannot see anything outside the box. I cannot recognize anything outside the box. Wow. Anything, whatever outside the box can be good or can be nice, I will never see it that way. I, I cannot see, I cannot acknowledge anything outside the box. The box, it's my world. So when the Lord came in his time and opened my eyes, it just like he sent an angel with a key and he opened that door. And he let me come out. He appeared to you? He, the Lord did not appear to me, you know, in, 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 did somebody, in a physical. Did, did someone talk to you? About? He, sent, he sent me a pharmacy, a, a pharmacist, Egyptian pharmacist. And she gave me a Bible for the first time in my life. Mm -hmm. I was, I was 35 years old, and I never read a Bible in my life before that day. When she gave me a Bible, and I start reading this Bible in one evening in my, my room, and this, is the Bi the, this Bible was the key mm -hmm. that God sent it to me to open the door. <coughs> when God used that Bible and opened the door, open the door means I start enjoying the freedom and the liberty to see things outside my box, to see what this Bible is talking about it, to see who this Jesus is and, and, and what, what you know the Bible is talk, uh, speaking about it. We have just a few minutes left. Mm -hmm. Did you pray? Did you, in reading the Word, you knew that this was the only way, that Jesus Christ was the only way? What? Did that tell you reading the Bible? I felt I felt that I am I have the liberty and I have also the curiosity to 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 read this book because I grew up thinking that this is a corrupted book. Uh, it's not a true book. So when I start opening the book for the first time, I start reading in Matthew chapter five, and then I was really so surprised by the power, the authority the magnificent word of this teacher called Jesus. So that power was coming right off of those pages. Exactly, out yeah. of these pages. Yeah. And it started, especially, I was just, I felt just I was shaking when he asked the disciple when they went to the mountain and uh, he started, you know, saying, blessed, blessed, and then he asked the disciples about the law of Moses. What Moses did gave you, they said, Master, he gave us the law. Eye for eye and tooth for tooth. Then he said, but I tell you, this word, but I, was shaking me 
because no other prophet from Adam to, to Muhammad, according to Islamic teaching, no prophet has the right to say what Jesus said. Why? Because Jesus, because God gave the Jews the law so, and the, the law of Moses, and he passed it to them through Moses. Moses was messenger. He wasn't lawmaker. Now, Jesus came. He did not say, I'm bringing you a new law. He did not say, oh, but I got a message from God, and I am handed to you here. No. He did not say anything like he said, but I tell you, he put him, he's himself in a position of a lawmaker. And that's the reason why the Jewish people during his time, they were so, so, uh, so troubled by him. They, from time to time, they ask him, tell us in which power or in which authority you, you do this, in which authority you saying this. Who do you think you are? So people were so troubled, you know, but he said, but I tell you means I am giving you a new commandment. So you realize that was for you too? So I felt We this, only have about one minute Yes, left. I felt this is for me. I felt that, ah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not hearing just a, a man that the Quran called him just a prophet or messenger. I'm talking with God. I, I'm hearing God himself speaking. Yeah. He is bringing a new commandment. He is delivering new commandment. But I tell you, love your enemies. Amen. Bless who curse you. And the nature of peace, forgiveness, yeah. reconciliation, I get to understand, yes, when the Quran says, when God wants to do something, you only use the word be, yeah. and the things will be. Yeah. So Jesus came to us. I wish I had an hour yes. with you. I wish I had an hour with I you. I know. And he explained to us that he yeah. is God. He's yeah. not just a man. Wow. That's right. Yeah. Anya, welcome back. <laughs> Dave's going to get very <laughs> Thank <involved>. you. <laughs> thank, thank you for being here via Skype. Thank it you was for, my pleasure. Thank you for so comfortably sitting there listening to this man of God, <laughs> your great husband. He is. Isn't it neat to hear him? Yes, it's, it's so powerful to see what God did. Amen. Amen. What God did to take him out of Islam and still keep him this love for Muslims. Yes. He knows the truth about the danger of Islam as a teaching, but still he has this love for Muslims as people. As Jesus told us, hate sin, but love the sinners. Wow. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Thank you for those wonderful, yes. wonderful closing words. And by the way, the website is on your screen. Get your copy. You will not believe what is in this book. God bless you. Bye-bye.